I wanted to um, talk about a couple of collections that I've seen um, during Paris Fashion Week for men's. Um, I was a bit confused about the schedule. I, I just assumed they were going to scrap 2021 for some reason. I don't know why, but I guess all the mo all the kind of news I saw online I didn't click on about digital shows and streaming was basically what they ended up doing. They ended up um, they ended up putting together shows that allowed yeah they end up basically streaming the shows online the same way they do during you know regular fashion calendar uh during a regular fashion um fashion week and stuff so that makes you know that w i guess that wasn't too difficult i guess in some respects the, maybe they had to change the actual um runway itself where they were going to actually show the show maybe you know they kind of changed the the layout or they just changed it completely so they kind of fit more into you know how b being better presented online in terms of streaming but i liked it so far i think the only exception i think that i didn't really like was maybe it's a bit of a stretch to save rick owens i think rick owens suffers from just you know taking you know um you know from just pictures online you kind of need to, yeah rick owens is probably one of the only shows during the fashion week calendar that i actually go and watch on youtube the whole way through um it goes a long way to kind of get the overall vibe of the season to see the clothes in motion um, to see how certain things drape, to see how they fall, um, just to see how they fit on the model. Of course, you know, you can't necessarily have any idea it's going to fit on you because the models are usually sample size. But just to kind of get a kind of impression in your head what it kind of looks like, you kind of need to see it in motion and on the body. So just seeing some pictures of the model Tyrone just um, standing on a white wall, you know, stark, it didn't really give it the necessary punch that it needs. Um, don't get me wrong, it can work. I think the Montclair and Rick Owen stuff that he did maybe last season where he's just like modelling it himself, that looked really good just with, with pictures. We didn't get to see a runway. But I don't know, maybe because they were like, you know, really well done pictures. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. But, and they'll, you know, you, you saw a lot of detail in the pictures that were taken. Maybe that was a good thing. But that was the only collection I didn't really like. But, you know, for the, for the most part, I think everyone else did a good job. But I want to quickly start off with a few shows that I thought were of interest to me. And uh, I guess the best way to start this off would probably be to say a show that I didn't necessarily get. And this is something that I will say with all due respect again, because I don't really know who this guy is. I don't know anything about his background. I don't know anything about, you know, whatever. But just subjectively from the outside looking in. Um, Again, I'm not, I've said, I think I've said this constantly on here before. I'm not really one to, I'm not really one that subscribes to the ideology of white privilege or to the, you know, to the mindset of white privilege. I'm not, I'm, I don't really suffer from victimhood. Um, I don't look at every situation and, you know, delineate, you know, that is some kind of power play or some sort of racial injustices at work. I don't necessarily like to do those things because I don't think it's useful. I think those things exist for sure, but I don't think it's useful in terms of getting forward in life and making something of yourself, right? You kind of have to just, uh, I always say you kind of have to um, work within the work as work within the world as it is, as opposed to as how you'd want it to be. Um, it's it's going to be difficult. You're going to have your own challenges you're going to face, whether they be based on your race, color, creed, religion, whatever it may be. But you're just going to have to just get through it. And then once you get out the other side, you then have a position. And when you get a bit of money and you have a bit of status, you have a bit of clout, you've got a bit of a network, you've got, you know, whatever it can be, you can then create your own little utopia, right? You can then go and start hiring your friends, getting people involved. That's That's the best way, I think, to really work things out. The whole idea about, you know, um smashing down the patriarchy has as noble as an actor that is i just think it's a pr proper waste of time and maybe resources that could probably be better spent trying to make your own thing pop off and then for you to create your own little utopia as an example as to what can be achieved and then you know let the market decide and if the market decides your thing is better that thing that's backed by the patriarchy will come tumbling down anyway that's my point of view again it's probably a little bit short-sighted but that's just how i see things but there are some occasions that make you think, hmm, this is odd. This is one of them, right? So I'm browsing all the Paris Fashion Week collections. I'm looking at what everyone's doing. I think, oh, it's amazing. And I see this brand pop up. Like, you know, and I'm like, this doesn't look like it fits with everything. And it's a brand called Reese Cooper, right? And the only thing that I'm, I'm bringing up is that because I'm not a believer in white privilege, I sometimes think there are exceptions where you sometimes see something done, especially in the arts or in a creative field, that's incredibly mediocre. 
but it's not being called out in the same way that a non-white person's work would have been called out. And I use an example, first off, of maybe a recent example of Samuel Russell, the Cold War. And also use an example, maybe you know a bit of a stretch because you know he, people love to hate him, but Virgil is a good example of it too, right? Two people that came into fashion with relatively, you know, you, they, they'd probably say they were novices. I think in Virgil's case, he doesn't really like to even say he's a designer, but they both came into it, you know, and essentially were learning on the job. But is you need to? It needs to be said that I think Virgil's first collection and Samuel Ross's first collection for a Cold War were far better than what this guy's put together. And he's probably got backing and he's got, you know, investment behind him, resources and stuff to make this stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure putting on a show in the middle of the forest somewhere isn't cheap. And the clothes are just really like, I don't know, like, again, maybe it's just I don't get it and I'm not really seeing what the vision is, but they just, there's nothing interesting about it. There's nothing memorable about it. It can probably be forgetful. If, if, I, if you told me this was... If you told me this was, um, if someone told you this was opening ceremony, you wouldn't bat an eyelid, right? It, it, it's just, you know, and I say that, it, and I say that because I do like opening ceremony, but they're just, you know, they are a bit schizophrenic when it comes to the, the references and themes they have for their collections. Nothing usually ties together. They usually, whatever they're interested or inspired by during that season, they just plop it onto a collection. There was nothing really, you know. There was no real rhyme or reason why they'd have a floral hoodie one season and then a, and a yellow Mac the next, just whatever they wanted to do. So the same could be said for this, right? It's just, you know, you slap whatever brand on it and you'd believe it. If someone told you this was Michael Kors, you'd probably believe it too. It's just really basic. And that's the issue, only issue I have with it, of this thing. It's like, fair enough, you're going to give those guys a hard time, Samuel Ross and Virgil, right? I guess in Virgil's case, he can come across a bit wanky, um maybe in Samuel Ross's case maybe because he's so young it can be a bit intimidating and whatever right they can have their things that you are not fans of but you have to judge people's work critically you have to be honest and just kind of say okay they're obviously learning on the job they obviously don't have the experience that you know some of these other um fashion mainstays have and if and as we've seen with what Kanye has done with Yeezy it's really really important that you have the infrastructure behind you because now, now we know why Kanye was complaining about remember he was ranting and raving that he didn't have the backers that Stella McCartney has because he knows you know he's been in a room with Stella McCartney and he knows you know Stella McCartney's brain in fashion or her ability to make clothes isn't at a higher level than his it's just that she has access to the best talent to the best factories um to the best textile makers that can you know put her vision to work it kind of reminds me of that um scene from that Carl Lagerfeld documentary where he sketched something on a bit of paper hands it to somebody in Italy and then you know a few hours later it's, it's it's actually been made into a real thing um and you know designers or creatives need that I think everyone knows that and if you if you're working even if you're making beats in your bedroom the more equipment you get the more access you have to better equipment the 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 sooner you can get your own recording studio maybe away from your home so you can kind of have some time to actually lock in the more your work improves so you know those those tools and those resources are really important um especially when the margins are so thin right because you know evidently for the most part maybe apart from i don't know i can't think of a designer that is really really garbage but for the most part as long as you get your your your, your foot through the door you're going to be given some you know some assistance to make it work right whether it's hiring a whole gang of csm interns or whether it's you know just copying designs from archive fashion shows and hoping no one notices you there's going to be a way for you to work make it work so when you don't it's always a bit of a surprise but people need to be given a bit of room to grow in it so that's, that's really the issue that i have with this so it's like you go and hammer samuel ross and virgil when they're doing their first collection or even kanye's first in paris you, let, let's think about what how what the reviews you remember the reviews when Kanye presented his first fashion show in Paris that he funded himself do you remember how he got smashed for that and then look at the stuff that Reese Cooper is doing it's just yeah man I don't know and again it's a shame really because obviously he's a young kid and he's he's gonna have a lot he's, he's obviously gonna evolve and grow and probably become a far better designer than he is now and I'm pretty sure of it you know fashion is one of those things over time you just you just end up getting it. It's just one of those things. It's rare that you see someone doesn't get it over a period of time. Or you end up just carving out a little niche for yourself and you end up having a dedicated group of fans and buyers that just love the stuff that you do. And you just, you know, you get a bit stale, but it, it works, right? I look at somebody like Alexander Alexander Wang is a good example, right? Um, don't get me wrong, he is supremely talented as a fashion designer, but, you know, it, it's pretty samey. 
but he's got his he's got his um he's got his tribe he's got his people that you know that are always going to buy his stuff season in season out so this might be it but i don't know man i just look at the stuff and think to myself does this really belong in paris fashion week like is this really what we're doing and i, I don't know and, and and maybe that's what i said previously in the other thing about how to make it in streetwear that might be the reason why it's so important this is another illustration why it's so important to make sure you have a good network because sometimes just being able because who knows he might be a really good cool dude right he might be the kind of kid that always turns up on time on shoots um gets your work gets hands in work before the deadline is always on hand for for you if you need any assistance and just generally is a good sounding board to bounce ideas off isn't too needy you know he's just a you know carries himself really well doesn't get too fucked up during um you know um store event openings whatever they may be just carries himself well so that goes a long way so when you when you say hey i want to start a brand and your friends are influential and they've got, you know, they've got access to, you know, venture capitalists, access to factories and stuff. They're going to open every single door for you to make it happen. So sometimes as annoying, and again, I don't know, I don't even design clothes. I'm just saying for somebody that does, I understand it could be annoying to see this on a runway, but I also think it's an, it's a, it should be a wake up call for you to kind of get out there and, you know, essentially make that network, try and connect the dots, try and expand your reach, try and, you know, connect with people maybe overseas, wherever they may be, especially on social media, there's no excuse now. You can sign in people's DMs, follow people, whatever it may be, tag them in your pictures. There's no real excuse to kind of expand your network. But it's really important because if people like Reese Cooper, if someone like a Reese Cooper can have a show on the Paris Fashion Week calendar, especially for men's, right? It's one of the most coveted spots I'd imagine for men's where all the streetwear bands go and show um or have a showrooms that they book out there during that season because all the big buyers of all the stores are out there during that time. So this is no like small thing and of course from what it looks like it looks like it's been well made and it's produced really well but in terms of just objectively whether it's good or bad it's not really good at all in my opinion and again goes to show that sometimes it does seem as if you know there is like a bit of a unfair stick given to young black designers when they're coming up especially when they don't have any backing and their stuff isn't as polished um you know i'd ha i'd love to f i'd love to imagine what sammy ross's stuff would have looked like if you would have come out straight out the gate you know with that funding straight out of the gate with the backing of whatever group that's invested in now how how it would have been received but he tried to you know he was doing it all bootstrapped and whatever it may be and for the most part you could see there was something there there was an ember there was something there that you could think okay this guy's got something but you look at this and you're like if you if someone told you that was made but that was made that was like a capture collection for top shop man or something you would never bat an eyelid but here it is on paris fashion week weird one man again maybe i don't know and i don't get it and you can leave me a comment let me know if reese cooper is like this seminal brand that i've not really heard of it's like the you know the new it's like gosha rubjinski you know redo right it's just come out of the woodwork it's something that people are talking about but i don't know brother i don't know if this is really the thing but for me it's not.